Did you know that you can initiate a Zoom call from your desktop? Zoom has an app that's called Workplace and it's free and you get it from the Zoom website. From downloading and setting it up to navigating through its features like scheduling and joining and managing settings, the app is the way to go when doing business virtually. Hi, I'm Betsy. And if you're new to Zoom or ever wondered why Zoom works best after installing the Workplace app on your computer, then this video is for you. So stick with me and by the end of this video, you'll see how easy it is to use Zoom even when you're not in a live meeting. And don't forget to grab my free Zoom Mastery Checklist in the description below. It's the same one I give to my Virtual Business Collective members to help them show up with confidence every time. Okay, let's go take a look. Getting the Zoom Workplace app installed on your computer starts here on the web at zoom.us slash download. Zoom gives you this application for free, and it's available for both Windows computers and Mac computers. And when you go here, it will identify what type of computer you're using. So as you can see here, at the time of recording this video, I am using my Mac computer. So it identifies that by saying, would you like to download Zoom Workplace for Mac? If you are using this video right now to follow along and go to it from your Windows computer, it says Zoom Workplace for Windows. Either case, go ahead and click the download button. Now be aware that the blue oval there, that button is the download button and you need to download the version for your computer. If you need more guidance about how to download Zoom Workplace for the first time, we have a video perfect for you. It's called the Beginner's Guide to Zoom. And I've included the link to that video in the description below. Once you've downloaded the Workplace app, you must install it. And once it's installed, it will open up on your local computer. And keep in mind that this application does change from time to time. There are updates and we have a video for that as well. We love it here at the Zoom Playground. We have videos for you so that you don't miss a beat. And that video is called How to Update Zoom in Two Easy Steps. And you'll find that video here. After you've downloaded the Workplace app and installed it, the first thing you see when you open it is the Zoom Workplace sign-in. What I recommend you do is you sign in with your Zoom account. Now that means you need to put in your Zoom account email in this first box where it says email or phone number, just put in the email address that you used when you signed up for your Zoom account, whether it was a free account or a paid one, and then click next. Once you've signed in to your Zoom account, you will see this, which is your home screen. I always say to people, if you look for that orange button and the three blue buttons, then you know you're in the Zoom Workplace app as opposed to on the web. Because being in Zoom and logged into Zoom, you're finding through watching these videos on the Zoom Playground that you can either be logged in on the web in your Zoom account or in the Zoom Workplace app on your desktop or even in the mobile app on your mobile device. So when you look for these orange buttons and three blue buttons, it indicates you're in the app. It also indicates that you are on your device and the buttons represent either starting a new meeting or joining someone else's meeting or even scheduling a meeting that's going to happen in the future. Now, right now, as we're recording, I'm using this application on my computer. So therefore, the orange button says back to meeting because it understands that right now I'm in a meeting. However, it is available for me to run my business. This application is free. And as you look across the top, there is a menu of items ranging from your calendar and then your chat. You can chat with people even when you're not in a Zoom meeting. You can add contacts and connect with people who you have been in a live Zoom meeting with and then chat with them. You can create whiteboards to use inside your Zoom meeting and then share them when you're live. You can also connect your Gmail if you want and connect that way. You can email people invites to your Zoom meetings. You can also take a look at the Zoom app marketplace. These are third-party apps that you can add and use when you're in live Zoom meetings. Some of my favorites are the Zoom timer, 
And you can see that one down the bottom of the first column. In addition to some gamification apps like Heads Up or even survey apps like SurveyMonkey. And these are third-party companies that say, hey, we'd like to give you our program so that you can use it and integrate it right into your Zoom meeting. Keep in mind that you do have to have, in many of these cases, another account for those third-party apps. And look at the one in the first column called Kahoot. It's a great popular game you can use for increasing engagement inside your Zoom meetings. Definitely leave a comment for me if using gamification is something that you'd like to learn more about, and I'll send you information on that. Continuing across the top, you can also incorporate what's called Zoom docs. These are documents that are taken from the transcripts of your live meetings, and then you can repurpose them into meetings and into resources for you to share with your participants. The next one you can see is the Zoom phone. I have added on the Zoom phone feature in my Zoom account. Uh, it's very much like, I know Google Voice has a voice over internet protocol. It's a type of phone line that you can add on using an internet provider. And Zoom has that as well. If you're not using Zoom phone, then this does not relate to you. There is a notes app and notes are ways that you can, during a live meeting, keep notes. But instead of writing on a notepad or putting the notes in another application, these are all included within your Zoom account. And then finally, there's a more menu. And on the more menu, it leads to other types of tools. One of them is the scheduler. Now there's an app out there called Calendly, very popular scheduling tool. Well, Zoom has its own and I've added on the Zoom scheduler. And so this allows me to share my booking page with people to see my calendar. Also from the more menu are workflows, which let you automate the tasks that have to take place or you'd like to take place daily or hourly. There are Zoom clips. Zoom clips replaces what you might know as a third-party app called Loom. This lets you make a recording of yourself or your shared screen or both and take that recording and then either share it through a link or download it and take the actual video file and upload it someplace else. You know, if it wasn't for Zoom clips, I wouldn't be able to share a video and then take a look at the comments or the reactions from people immediately. You get real time results. You get a transcript, you get chapters, all from this built-in tool. I highly recommend you following along inside the Zoom Playground as we learn more about Zoom clips. From the More menu, you also have something that's called Tasks. Tasks is a way of asking Zoom to use AI and follow in your transcript and pick up phrases that you've used that indicate what has to be done. And it's like magic. It listens. It says, oh, well, you said based on your chat messages in your academy class that you would follow up with this one client. And these tasks appear automatically so that you can check off what you're working on and be able to keep track of what still has to be done. Following along on the more menu, you have this new item called the hub, the Zoom hub. Using AI, this is, there is a feature integrated into your Zoom Workplace app called AI Companion. And the hub is a combination of all of these different AI resources, ranging from docs to whiteboards and clips, and even organizing resources into folders. This alone, this, the hub has changed the way I use Zoom from what we knew as maybe when the world shut down abruptly and we all needed it to stay connected to now where I use Zoom as an application on a daily basis, even when I'm not in live meetings. And then finally on the more menu is the surveys option. And surveys are a way that you can create a link and then share it out to people, provide that 
link inside either your social media posts or your emails. And then they fill out this information and they click submit. And then you get the information back immediately. It replaces for me what you might know as a Google form, but you can keep these all under one roof in your Zoom account. And so I use these either pre-meeting, so for a pre-assessment. So I want to find out what you'd like to learn when you come to my Zoom classes. I also use them midway through my classes to see maybe what you've learned so far. And I use them for trivia or icebreakers. I also use them for post assessment. So after the class has ended, and I'd like to know what you thought about the class, you can also share it inside the Zoom chat and they can click the link and take it with you. One of the nicest things about surveys is that you can share the survey either with a link to individual people, or you can even generate a QR code, which is built in right inside. You share the QR code as a graphic and then people can scan it with their phones. And that's how to use Zoom from the desktop. If you want more gems just like this, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to be notified for each new weekly video that's published. Oh, and drop a comment below with any questions you might have because I love to help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.